Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that you're doing really well today or tonight, whenever and wherever you are on planet Earth. <laughs> when you hear the message, I uh, have been thinking a lot about the message that the Lyrans had brought us about the solar flares that were hitting and the energy it was bringing to us. And thank you, God, I've come out of it pretty unscathed. I think my lower three chakras are pretty clear and I've gone through most of my issues completely, at least on those three, (laughs) for those three layers. But my teenage kid has had um, a couple snags some stuff from the past started coming up and I thought well you know let's talk about it and then he got really emotional and then I just watched him slide down this emotional roller coaster and after a little while he he started to come right back up and I noticed it was a an energy thing you know like I just saw it go down, 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 down. And I said, don't let this energy drag you down because this isn't you. This is the old you. This is some stuff you went through a long time ago. And I pointed it out to him. And of course he got angry because no one likes to be told that, you know, they're letting something happen to them that they don't want. Obviously no one loves that. (laughs) But I'm his mom. It's my job. So I pointed out and after a while, he was just like, yeah, I don't know. That was weird, right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, so I'm going to show you something. And it dawned on me that I'm going to have my show about this tonight. I'm going to talk about the Abraham list of emotions, the vibrations of emotions as well. I'm, so I'm going to... Combine the two things. I'm going to go over emotions and what actual hertz frequency they are, as well as what do you do when you're feeling a low level emotion? Like, you know, for example, grief. When someone dies and all you can feel is grief, literally the lowest vibrational emotion you can feel is grief. It's, it's a horrible. It like literally drags you down. It's like a damn anchor, you know, not a good anchor that holds you steady, <laughs> but an anchor that will drag you down to the bottom of the sea where you can't see the surface. You can't see the rest of reality. So if you guys are going through some stuff right now, I want you to be aware that you're being gently reminded and asked to revisit some of your past. If you haven't resolved it yet, it's going to come up. And if you have resolved it like me, you're probably waking up like, Oh, I'm kind of happy today. Like for me, I woke up this morning and I, I, um, I got up and I brushed my teeth and I realized it was super, super early yet. So, all right, I'm going to go back to bed. And as I was getting back into bed, my twin flame, who I've never met yet, he started telepathing with me and he goes, Hey, I feel your energy. Are you awake? And I said, yeah, I'm awake. Of course I'm awake. Maybe I felt your energy first, (laughs) you know? And he was just like, I can't wait. One day we're going to wake up together. Like I know, I believe that too. I'm excited about that. I can't wait for it. And it's funny because, you know, I have these conversations with him once in a while and I don't know. And I have to like, I'm like double checking. I'm asking his higher self. I'm asking my higher self. I'm asking God is, am I fooling myself? Is this a really, a really real conversation or (laughs) am I just hoping it's real? And I always get a, yes, it's real, you know? And sometimes he tells me information that, you know, I would have no other way of knowing it's stuff that I'm not really, you know, privy to unless he tells me. So I can't wait to meet him in real life and ask him some of these things he's told me. 
like he told me he plays guitar and I'm like, okay, cool. And he sings and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I sing too, but I sing terrible. <laughs> I love to sing, but uh, I don't think anyone would pay to see me or hear me sing, but <laughs> you know, just the people like to point and mock. Maybe those people might like to hear me or see me. They could fool of myself, but, <laughs> but you know, so he's told me a couple things about himself like that, you know, that, all right, that's cool. Cause that's not me at all. Even though you're twins, you could be like interested in different things and you can have different ideas or whatever, but you're going to have similar things, of course, as well, just like in any relationship, but You know, but I was, I woke up and I was with my twin for a while and it felt really nice. It felt solid. Like this is, this is uh, good. And and I said, how are you doing with your life? And he's like, I'm doing, doing okay. I'm stabilizing some things in my life and I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. I feel solid. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm starting to get to that point where I feel solid. And I don't mean like physical denseness, solid like solid liquid gas solid. I don't mean like that. <laughs> We're not talking the science or chemistry here, but I, I've been feeling like I know I'm very close to becoming financially independent away from the current income I have. I need to be able to replace my income because in a year I lose it. So, You know, I feel that I need to do that before my twin comes into my life so that I will feel like a sovereign being and I'll be solvent and I'll be fluid. Like I'll be able to move through life with or without my twin in a very good, solid way. You know, like I'm not looking to be rescued. I'm not looking to rescue. I'm emotionally healthy. You know, I'm like really, really working on myself in every possible level. And I know that you are too. All of you guys are working on yourselves as well. I know each and every one of you out there, you're working your, your, your spiritual butt off. (laughs) I know for sure I am, you know, but I'm trying to find, um, I don't know if it's called a balance. I suppose maybe it would be called a balance. I mean, I moved to the center of the damn earth. I am like literally living on the equator in Ecuador. I am, I came to the place that symbolizes balance. It's what I've wanted for a long time is to feel a hundred percent balanced because I mean, when I was married, my husband controlled the money. He made the money and controlled the money and I didn't, my friends would come up from Los Angeles to see me once in a while, but I had hardly anything in common with the people where we lived. We lived in a very tight knit, um, Bible thumping style Christian community. And I have nothing in common with people like that. I tried to make friends and then I had to go to Chico and I made a lot of friends in Chico in time. But after my marriage is over, I made more friends in Chico but I didn't have much of a balance. Like, you know, I was just like a hundred percent of my life and time was spent being a wife and a mother. And I didn't, you know, I, I did have a lot. I, I am lucky in the way that I was able to study metaphysics every day. I, I was able to read. I had so much luxury. I could just lay around and drink coffee and read. And then I would hop on. I had this exercise thing. I'd hop on and exercise I had it facing the TV so I could watch movies with my husband while I exercised. And, and then he would have his turn, you know, when he was able to. And, um, but we had a really good life. I mean, it was like a closed system though. It was just, it was like our kids and us and his father lived downstairs and we took care of his dad. And it was just, um, it was pretty idyllic for a lot of, in a lot of ways, but you know, I would read books on writing screenplays and being a good writer, and then I would write. So I had a lot of hours to do my own thing that I liked, you know. And I didn't have to worry about money or anything at the time. And then um, we got a little stretched when, you know, inflation started and we need a little extra money. And I went to work, and I, and I ended up working 
one job that wasn't a lot of money. I said, you know, let me, let me look for another job. And I ended up getting another job. And one was like, well, it's just on one day a week. Okay. And then the other one was two days a week. And then, so I had to get three jobs to make up a full-time job. And before you know it, when the heavy seasons came along, I was a merchandiser. All of a sudden I'm working 60, 70 hours a week. It was like crazy. It was like, this is only supposed to be a part-time thing so that I could provide groceries for my family. You know what I mean? And so, but my life wasn't, it was just like, it wasn't balanced, but it was fun. It was great. And then it got imbalanced again, where everything was about work. And then my husband and I divorced and he died. And then I ended up being a mom again, where everything is again, imbalanced. Like I'm not able to have a career really, you know, I, I'm trying now. I'm my, now that my youngest is almost 17. I'm able to now obviously have the show and I'm able to do a little bit more, but I'm still not financially solvent again because I'm going to lose all this money in a year. So it's like, I feel like my whole life has been struggling for balance. You know what I mean? And I wonder if you guys haven't been going through this too, the last five, six, seven years, 10 years, <laughs> it's all been, it's always been about that. And now that we're, um, we're being buoyed up, we're in the fifth dimension and then we get pushed back down by the solar energies because there might be some stuff we forgot, we forgot to, uh, deal with or kind of push down stuff down repressed and then it comes up and we're like oh man and now we gotta deal with that maybe someone died and you haven't dealt with the grief of it and you forgot forgot they existed and then all of a sudden you're gonna hear a song or smell a perfume or see a flower or be served a meal something that's going to remind you of that person and you're going to just go all the way through that grief all over again. You know, that might be an example or maybe you've repressed other issues that are now coming back, coming back to the surface so that you can revisit it. it. And then after that, you have to regain and find your balance again. So, you know, for me, I'm almost at that point where I, okay, I've cleared out my lower three chakras. I'm now working on my heart chakra issues, you know, like I don't act violently and angry when men I'm not attracted to ask me if I can go out with them. (laughs) So I was getting kind of pissed off at people for a while, like for a couple of years that was like super imbalanced with that. Like, oh, hell no, I have no interest in you. You know, like I get really angry, you know, I don't want a relationship at all. And that's not true. I do. I want a relationship with the right man though. I don't want a relationship with the wrong man. I don't want to waste my time, my energy, my precious energy and my life. I don't want to waste that anymore. (laughs) You know, I'm beyond just going out with whoever randomly and playing the field. You know what I mean? And, and, um, before I was more of a people pleaser type of person, um, I would have to say when my husband and I first broke up, I was very, uh, insecure and very emotionally unbalanced in the way that when a guy wanted to talk about sexual things, you know, I would go into that conversation. And today is this hilarious because a guy that um, was on one of my social media things, he asked me how many times he, he's like, I don't even know this guy. And we were having a normal conversation. And all of a sudden he said, how many times have you had sex in the last year? And I said, what, what about me made you think that my sex life was any business of yours? Is everybody in your country so damn rude? Did your mother not teach you manners? Cause that that's really honestly none of your business. We're not in a relationship. So, and I'm not here to like, look for a relationship. I'm not interested in you in that way. So, I mean, you know, we were just having a normal conversation about dreams And then all of a sudden he just bust out with that. And I'm like, huh? Wow. So it's like, I'm sorry. I have boundaries and I don't allow men to cross them. (laughs) And it made me feel solid and strong and good about myself. You know, like, wow, that is an issue I used to have. And now I'm not imbalanced anymore in that way. You know, so 
you know, and he said, do you need a big, strong man in your life? I'm like, no, not really. But thanks for asking. (laughs) You know, like he said, do you need a a man who's stronger? I'm like, no. Yeah, like it's like a weird question, really. And I see the sexism in the questions now that I didn't see before. I have like such a higher awareness, a higher level of awareness than I that I did even ten years ago of the sexism. My kids, thank God for my kids. This new generation, they're really pointing out some crazy stuff for us that we never noticed before. Like, it's really hard for me to watch an old black and white movie these days without getting pretty mad about it, actually. You know, like when the women are trying to assert themselves and have a job in the old black and white movies, they still have to, like, you know, break a nail or trip and break a heel and or fall into the man's arms. And then he just forces himself on her. And that's supposed to be okay. I used to love all the old movies. And now I'm just like, they're kind of ruined for me. (laughs) Now that I've seen the sexism, I see through the, the BS of it. Like, I'm a strong woman and I'm a tough reporting journalist. And Oh, oh, I just fainted and fell in your arms. And now we're in love. And two seconds later, we're going to get married because you're the strong man that rescued me. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's like so unrealistic. And it puts way too much pressure on the men. If you're a man listening to this right now, don't you think that puts a little too much pressure You know, like, oh, after we're married, I'm going to just, you know, quit my job and have babies and stay at home. And you're going to do all the work and, and, you know, outside the home. Like that kind of idea, those kind of thinking, those ideas are over. It's so 3D. You know, um, or or the, or vice versa. Like, you know, I'll, I'll give birth, but uh, as soon as I'm healed, I'm going back to work and you're the house husband, you know. I mean, however you want to work that out, if that's the lifestyle you want still, that's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the idea that all women are one way or all men are one way. A friend of mine and I were having a conversation about how in his culture, if and and he he and I can talk about sexuality because he and I have been friends for many years in person. I know him very, very well. Um, you know, he's married, he's got a kid, you know, but he was telling me that, um, he's wondering about his kid becoming, um, like growing up and saying, Hey, I'm transgender. And he's like, what would we, you know, we have to support our child if she grows up and she's a straight woman, that's okay. But if, what if she's gay? What if she's straight, but wants if it feels like a man inside so wants to have a wife someday as a man what do I do because you're going through this right now right I'm like yeah I am going through this my oldest is transgender so we've been having this conversation and he said you know in my culture if a man and a woman are making love and the woman touches the man's ass in any way for any reason In my culture, that means the man is gay. And there's so much crap around, well, if you do this in bed, that means you're gay. If you do that in bed, that means, no, it doesn't. None of this stuff does. And and then I started thinking about it, and he made me think about my own culture in the United States, where if you are a man and you wear a pink shirt or a purple shirt, then everybody goes, "Uh uh-huh, gay, so gay right that what what doesn't mean that men all over the world wear wear pink and it doesn't mean that it's only in the u.s there's all these weird sexual hang-ups you know and then i started realizing i remember um a couple of men that i had been with you know i had boyfriends or whatever um in my past that freaked out completely when i accidentally brushed across their nipple in bed I'm not gay. Don't touch my nipple. What what does that mean? It doesn't mean you're gay. What the hell kind of weird, erroneous bullshit is that? It does not mean you're gay. You know, if a woman 
puts a strap on and does you from behind, that still doesn't mean you're gay. It means that's what you like sexually in bed. Uh, see, you have to separate the two things. I mean, there's genders, things, there's sexual identity, and then there's what you like to do in bed, which does not really have to do with your gender identity or your sexual identity. It's just what you like. What you like is what you like. I like to eat Italian food. Does that make me Italian? No. <laughs> And I just started realizing all this stuff that we have to unravel from our world and our, and our lives that has really messed us up in our head, really messed us up emotionally, big time. So anyway, I've been, so I, I don't know. It's just like weird to like go back to a website I haven't been on in years and then to be approached with similar kinds of questions or ideas and And I know that I've grown emotionally in my heart and, and I've healed a lot of my anti love sentiments and I've never been against love and I've never been against relationships, but I have been against men who would treat me bad, but I didn't know what to do to find a good man. And now I do, I don't know how to find a good man. I just know when I meet a man, whether I know the assessment, I know how to do you know, check off the boxes. Does he do this or this, this or this? You know, I know what the red flags are. The other day on, on Instagram, this, this, um, this woman put a cartoon that that just made me laugh so hard. It was a man holding, holding a bouquet of what looked like flowers, red flowers to, and handing it to a woman. When you look closely, it's a bouquet of red flags. And on the first date, Men will show you who they are. Women will show you who they are. They will tell you exactly who you are, who they are, but you have to really listen. And if you just go, oh, ha, 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 I'm sure you're not like that. You just got played. You played yourself. You know, if a guy says, oh, I hate to share my dessert. I don't like to share anything about myself. I don't like to share I'm not a sharer. Oh, well, now I know how you're going to be in bed. Now I know how you're going to be with your children. If we had children, now I know how it's going to be in life later. Everything's for you and nothing's for me. Now I know, you know what I mean? So like if someone says something that it's like, sounds weird, don't just poo poo it. Take it at face value. Yeah. Even in business, you know, in, in, in business or in um, every kind of partnership, whether it's friendship or, you know, it doesn't have to be romantic or sexual, just in every possible way in your life. If someone says something about themselves that seems a little off to you, people tell you who they are usually within the first day or two of meeting them. You know, and it might not be who they are forever. It might be who they are this week. Their heart is hurt. And they say, screw men or screw women. I'm never gonna. Well, maybe they aren't not, not for another six months or six years. It just depends until they can heal that part of themselves again. No one, not one of us is broken beyond recognition, but you can't expect that your princess charming or your prince charming is going to waltz on into your life and make it all better because he or she is the one you have to make yourself better stand strong be solid on your own have that balance have that healthy emotions how that, that attitude of healthy emotions and, and the healthy spirituality and, and find the balance as best you can. Because when that person comes into your life and if they're your twin, especially that means that they've been doing the same thing in their, in their own mind, heart, soul, body. Like right now I'm working on my body. I'm, I'm on the keto diet, as you guys know. I'm trying to lose a couple of pounds here, you know? And I thought, well, maybe I'll try to do it for six months. See how good I look in six months. And then I realized 
I might just stay on this diet the rest of my life, actually. It's very healthy. I feel good on it. I don't crave carbs. I don't really crave sweets. My son came home with candy bar yesterday and gave me a bite and I ate it. And I was like, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I, I didn't really need it. And I kind of regretted having a bite of it. But he left me more, like a couple little tiny bites more. And I thought, well, I don't want to hurt his feelings. And he gave it to me and I don't want to throw it away. I want him to see it in the trash later and feel like I rejected him. You know, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll eat it. But, you know, I'll eat my, my lunch first. It's healthy. So I did that. I ate my lunch first, whatever. And right after I ate my healthy keto lunch full of vegetables, I, t- I took a bite of the chocolate and it didn't, I couldn't taste the sweetness anymore. It tasted extremely bitter and I didn't like it. It didn't even taste good to me. But before I ate the keto meal, it, it, it tasted kind of good. Ooh, this is really good. But afterwards, my body didn't even need it or want it. I was just like, ugh, ugh, it's kind of bitter. It's like a weird aftertaste or something. It was very weird. It was a very strange realization that if I just stay on the keto uh, uh, keto diet, that I'm going to be like just really super healthy and in time I'm going to be very thin. And I was thinking about, you know, how it kind of when bodybuilders go on a special diet to get rid of the, the um, fat inside each individual fiber of their muscle, you know, and you stay on this diet long enough, you're going to be really thin and muscular and good looking and strong, um, strong, you know, physically. <clears throat> so I don't know, I'm working on myself financially and working on myself physically, um, always with the emotional stuff and the mental and the, and the heart level stuff. But now when people ask me though, um, you need, or say you need a good man in your life. I say, yes, I do. And that's why I'm looking for my twin flame. I've, I've had dreams about his face and I'm excited because I think he's going to be in my life soon. And if they go, well, maybe I'm him. Ha ha ha. No, I don't really feel a resonance with you, but thank you for suggesting it. No stone unturned and all that, but I'm sure that your woman's out there. Good, good luck. I, I'll pray for you. That's how I handle that now. Whereas before I was like kind of immature and like, oh, hell no, I have no interest in you because you're this and you're that and I'm this and I'm that and we just don't have that. No, ew, yuck, no. And, and, and you know, it's like you kill what you want when you talk about it in a negative way, right? So, <laughs> you know, and I, I knew that and then I'd feel bad for a couple days and like, I can't draw to me that which I want when I start speaking out loud about what I don't want in, in knocking down the thing I truly secretly desire in my heart. Yeah. Do I want a relationship? Yeah. I want a loving, beautiful, heartfelt, genuine, authentic partnership. You know, I don't want him to feel like he has to rescue me in order to be loved or that I'm here to rescue him and that's a form of love. No, I'm here to support him to be the strongest man he can be and to be as good as he wants to be in life to like to be as solid and strong as he can be. I'm here to root for him and cheer him on in his career and be grateful that he's happy doing what he loves And I expect the same from him. A hundred percent. And I look forward to quiet evenings at home. Maybe holding hands and watching a movie or hanging out. Maybe taking a hot tub or a sauna or swimming or whatever it is that we do. And I look forward to, you know, maybe going out to eat once in a great while. Keto friendly, hopefully, but if not, we can have a cheat night. That's all right. <laughs> as long as we don't cheat on each other. Hey, I cheat on the diet. That's okay. But I've been thinking about stuff like, you know, how I was kind of going against my own dreams because when someone who was the wrong someone would suggest something that wasn't where I want to go or be, it's like, hmm. 
I, I just didn't know how to handle it. And I've been listening to a lot of people's advice online and I've, I've bought a couple programs actually more for about business and, and, um, different, you know, it's more like business related things, but it's like so great that I'm applying it in every possible way. And then I could tell you guys about it. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful in whatever way, take it the way you need it and take the energy from it that, that, um, resonates with you and leave the rest, obviously. And that's all I got to say about that for right now. I'm going to, um, I'm going to take a quick break because I put some food in the oven and I'm sure it's ready. And then when I come right back, I'm I'm not going to take a break though. I mean, you guys will just be like a click on the line, but I'm going to uh, come back with all of the the daily news. And then I'm going to come right back after that. And we're going to go over the emotions and what do you do? What emotions do you reach for next? When you feel something you don't like, what's the next available rung up that ladder? And and you're going to understand what I mean when we get to it. All right. All right, guys, we're at 98 today on the Ascension Symptom Scale. Hot flashes have been a thing all day long for me and I read the other day that a lot of people are like are y'all having a lot of hot flashes just heat waves and waves of energy pouring over us and as I record this I just I'm I'm burning up I feel like it's summertime (laughs) and it's like 59 degrees out so I mean it's I'm I'm burning up it's it's something that's happening right now and it's part of the ascension um Anyway, uh, yeah, so 98, we came down from one point yesterday. And as far as Italy is concerned, on DisclosureNews.it, the Schumann residence there was relatively calm after a strong past activity, but they had just very light activity from 5 to 11 UTC time. The strongest peak was just before 8 UTC, and it was 17 hertz, and that was... Well, just about it. Not very much. Not not very much at all. Now, in uh, California, the Schumann resonance frequency at midnight was 90 hertz frequency. And by 4 a.m., it was 96. Went up a little bit. Now, in Hofuf, Saudi Arabia... They started off at 81, and they went basically just to 81. (laughs) It was just a straight line across. That was it. Now, in Lithuania, their hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale was 123 at midnight, and it went down only to 120 at 4 a.m. In Alberta, Canada, it's been pretty big, right? They were at 252 hertz frequency at midnight, and by 4 a.m., they were at 254. In Northland, New Zealand, they started off at 43, and they went up to 45 by 4 a.m. Now, again, in Hulului, South Africa, just like it's been, oh my gosh, guys, it's still zero, completely zero, all the way across. Someone better go over to Hulului and make sure they still exist. I mean, what? Why is it zero? It's been zero for like eight or nine days now. In A Course in Miracles, ACIM.org, or download your favorite app, we are on today lesson 80. We're not going to do the whole lesson like we never do, but we just say a few words from it just so we can get our. Our thinking straightened, straightened out if it's not straight, if that makes sense. We have to understand who and what we are, and this is one way, one path. There's a thousand paths to God. If, if there's one, there's a thousand. There's more than that, probably, but, you know, this is just what we're doing this time, and then we'll do something else when we're done with the 365 lessons. 
It was one for every day of the year, and you could get through these lessons in one year. So anyway, we're on lesson 80. <laughs> lesson 80 is let me recognize my problems have been solved. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. So let's see. Um, see if there's anything decent or really good in here that I could just say. Okay, here we go. You are entitled to peace today. A problem that has been resolved cannot trouble you. Only be certain you do not forget that all problems are the same. Their many forms will not deceive you while you remember this. One problem, one solution. Accept the peace this simple statement brings. The pe- and the statement is, you are entitled to peace today. And in the beginning, it says, if you're willing to recognize your problems, you will recognize that you have no problems. Your one central problem has been answered and you have no other. Therefore, you must be at peace. Salvation thus depends on recognizing this one problem and understanding that it has been solved. One problem, one solution. Salvation is accomplished. Freedom from conflict has been given you. Accept that fact and you are ready to take your rightful place in God's plan for salvation. It just says, repeat over and over and over to yourself today with gratitude and conviction this. Your only problem has been solved. So you just say, my only problem has been solved. Or as Lesson 80 says, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Well, there you have it. After the break, we're going to come back and we are going to go over the emotions. And I'm going to present this on a scale. If you've never heard about what I'm about to present to you, this might just blow your mind. So we'll see right after this. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars. And oh, wait, we're not doing that right now (laughs) on Spotify. You can listen to all of that in one place for free. And you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm 
forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. All right, guys, while I was doing my research this evening about emotions and the energy, the vibration that are that is generated through feeling or expressing these emotions, I found a really strange and interesting website called wayofthewhale.com. There's pictures of whales swimming in the ocean and it's very blue website. It's actually pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> um, it says way of the whale flow in the slipstream of life's purpose. That's like their tagline. <laughs> and there's an article I found on this website called energy of life. And it's talking about energy and it's saying that basically, obviously everything in the world has a vibrational frequency. That's true. So they say under, I'm going to read just part of this, not the whole thing, obviously, but it says energetic frequency. Frequency is defined as a measurable rate of electrical energy that is constant between any two points and is typically measured in megahertz. Okay. I mean, I thought it was measured in hertz, normal hertz, but that's what they say. So we're going to go with that for right now. Human beings emit a biofrequency that fluctuates during the day as we are exposed to various stressors, emotional challenges, and toxic substances within our environment. Our biofrequency is a direct representation of the status of our health. The higher our vibration, the healthier our body. Consistent exposure to negative stressors can lower our energetic frequency. So it goes on to say basically that when you have a negative thought pattern, it will lower our vibration by 12 megahertz, which is 12 million hertz. But a positive thought will raise our frequency, our vibration by 10 million hertz or 10 megahertz. And it says, so further research indicates that energetic clearing methods such as meditation, prayer, and other practices will, will can be used to significant, significantly increase our baseline frequency level up to 15 million hertz. <clears throat> so we can deliberately elevate our energetic resonance to restore harmony within our auric field and health within our body and like it says we could do this through any number of things ho'oponopono it, I mean they don't say this but this is what I'm saying you use ho'oponopono you can use um, the um, a kundalini meditation if you are have already raised your kundalini you can do just normal meditation mindfulness practice you can use deep breathing you can use a biofeedback machine you can pray, meditate, take a nap, get your mind off something, watch a comedy, dance, listen to music. There's many, many things you could do to raise your megahertz frequency, right? Now, it says that a healthy body in the daytime usually runs at 62 to 72 million hertz. And during illness or infection, you run at 52 to 58 megahertz or million hertz. If you have cancer, your energy field is 40 to 42 megahertz. Do you see there's an extra implication here? What if you're, okay, so what if you have cancer and you're running at 40 megahertz and then you meditate? Well, that'll bring you up to 55, which puts you during an illness infection what if you continue to meditate and that puts you at 70, which puts you into a healthy body, right? <laughs> so if you have cancer, you have to raise yourself by like 25 million Hertz, higher frequency 
uh, cancer can't survive. In a higher frequency, infections can't survive. If you are near death, you're almost at death's door. You're only going to be vibrating at 24 to 26. So basically 25 million hertz or 25 megahertz. That's a huge shift, right? In increase or decrease, depending on uh, what your state of health is. And maybe you could shift some other things just by shifting your vibration. So, um, let's see. They say vibrational resonance is directly related to our state of consciousness. As we increase our frequency, we heighten and expand our conscious awareness. See, that's what I've been telling you guys, right? We've been going into the uh, fifth dimension. We're trying to ascend. And the way we're going to ascend is raise up. To ascend means to raise up, to lift up. So we're going to raise our vibration up in order to go up in dimension. So we're able to experience, perceive, and comprehend the world around us with more depth and clarity when we expand our conscious awareness, right? So higher states of consciousness are associated with divine inspiration, increased levels of creativity, and obviously better health and most likely better sleep. As we align with higher frequencies, we tap into a zone of joy, ease, harmony, and inner peace, according to wayofthewhale.com. And then says the free flow of elevated life force energy within us constitutes authentic empowerment. I'm going to read that again. The free flow of elevated life force energy within us constitutes authentic empowerment. Spiritual frequencies range from 92 to 360 hertz, and we can achieve these higher resonances with regular practice. Now, they said hertz, not megahertz there, so I don't know if it was a typo or not. I have a feeling it meant they, they meant megahertz. They just didn't put the M. But it is important to note that if you just raise your frequency, what all the thing, all the great things that can happen, right? So let's see. Um, I'm looking for some numbers on this article. It's a pretty long article. If you guys want to read it, again, it's found at www.wayofthewhale.com forward slash energy of life. And in between the words, there's a little underscore. So it's energy underscore of underscore life. Or you just look at Way of the Whale and look up articles. And it talks about how the the frequency of the earth is shifting up. They talk about uh, force versus flow. You know, obviously, in, in the law of attraction as well. Now it says, when the vi- human body consistently resonates within a vibratory range between 62 and 72 megahertz, we are considered to be relatively robust in a state of health. And when we experience emotional or physical distress, then it lowers again. So energetic medicine is a real thing, and it's been proven in many different um, ways already. And we, so we know that this is true. But it's really just up to us to keep to raise and keep our vibrations up. So how do we do that? So I'm going to let's see here. I'm going to talk to you guys about the emotional scale, the emotional guidance scale that Abraham Hicks speaks of like all the time. This is really interesting. So let me see here. 
I had it all queued up and then I accidentally shut down the page. Darn it. Add a really beautiful um, tag. Now, but here it is, I think. Here it is. The Abraham Hicks Emotional Scale. Or Emotional Guidance Scale. So, this was found in a couple books that they did. All right. I was... I had both of these books, and this was in both of them, and... This was something that really helped me. In fact, I, when I first heard it, I was so impressed with it that I blew it up. (laughs) I printed it up and I put it on my, in fact, I laminated it. (laughs) I put it on my refrigerator and I told my kids about it. And something when they were little, they used to do. And I just told my kid, my um, youngest today about it again. Kid forgot, it's been 10 years. He totally forgot about it. And, and, um, he was so impressed with it that when he went out on his date this evening, he told his girlfriend about it and they started working on themselves already. And they're like, wow, this is actually pretty cool because I know where I'm at and I know where I need to be and I know what the next one is. And this is what I'm going to do. So if you've never heard of Abraham Hicks and some of my younger listeners probably have not. And if you're brand new awakening, to the spiritual stuff. And this, this show is for everybody, whether you have been doing metaphysics for 20 years or 50 years, or if you just said meta, what (laughs) never heard of that, but I like spirituality and I'm new to it. So, um, my show is meant to help everybody. You know, it's either going to be a reminder or a refresher course, or it's going to be all new information, you know? So, Like Ralph Smart says, we're all deep divers. (laughs) And so that's why we're going through all this. So now Abraham Hicks, if you don't know, Esther Hicks is a lady who one day just discovered that she can channel these beings of light basically from heaven. They're ascended masters. And they call themselves Abraham, even though they're a group of people. And they wanted to get messages through to her. And one day she just started channeling. And her husband's like, oh my God. And you know, she thought she was going crazy. She went to the doctor. There was nothing wrong with her. She thought maybe it's her thyroid or something. Like, what the hell is wrong with me? And she and then she went to a psychiatrist. She went to a spiritual healer. Get the spirits out of me. I don't know what's going on, you know. She went through all this stuff and, and she was just like confused as hell. And then finally she found out that she's a channeler and she went and saw a channeler and said, Oh, okay, well that's who I am. That's what I do. And what happens with her is she is not an indirect telepathic channel. Like I am. She is a direct channel where Abraham, the group takes over her body and they walk around with her body and they hold her um, you know, they, they move her limbs and they, they use her voice. She gets completely taken over. And they talk to people and people ask them questions directly. And she goes all over the world. In fact, what's really funny is my friend who had been asking me the same questions over and over again for 10 years. Um, she decided she couldn't get any more information from me and decided to end the friendship because she wasn't taking any of my advice or listening to me at all. And she was frustrated with me. And so she's like, that's it. I'm never going to talk to you again, basically. And I was like, oh my God, she wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise. And then she ended the friendship and, and like, just, that was that, that was the end of it. I was just like, whatever, she'll come around if she's going to, but she started writing to my kids. She's being a chicken shit about it. She's not calling me or writing me, but she's writing my kids. Like, is your mom really mad at me? And it's like, I don't really, I love her and I, I wish her well. And I don't really give her a lot of thought one way or the other, although I miss her sometimes, but you know, the wagons always circle back around. If someone's meant to come back in your life, they will. And if they're not, they won't just, that's the way it is. And we're going to see each other in heaven again anyway. So I'm not really always very upset about it. You know, usually sometimes I get upset and they'll throw me for a loop for a week or two. And then, 
then I get back into my higher vibrational state and I'm fine. But, but, um, I was interested in hearing Abraham Hicks. So I started looking on YouTube and I was watching all these videos about it. Tons of videos on Abraham Hicks and, and, um, there was one that had just like a picture and it was a recording of a session they had done. And I hear this person asking this question. I'm like, Oh my God, that's like a question my friend used to ask. And then she asked another question. Then she asked a third question and then she heard the answer, which was the exact same answer that I've always been giving. And I'm like, God, I wish my friend could hear this. And then all of a sudden the girl started laughing or the woman started laughing And it was my friend. It was her laugh. And she has a very distinctive laugh. And then I started laughing. I went, okay, this is weird. So I rewound it, called my kids into the room, and they listened to it. And they're like, well, yeah, that's, you know, that's our aunt. I'm like, yeah, I know. And she's not really their aunt, but they grew up knowing her as their aunt. And because she's like a sister to me, which is why we're fighting like sisters right now, I guess. But (laughs) we're like spiritual sisters. (laughs) And she and she started laughing. I'm like, oh my god! She flew to Florida to hear this message from spiritual beings being channeled through a woman, and it was identical, almost word for word, to what I've been telling her for 20 years, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, one of the big things that Abraham has told through. Esther Hicks and they they say Abraham Hicks because it's Abraham through Hicks through Esther so and God bless her her husband died a number of years ago but they used to travel together and um, and they're having their own spiritual struggles while they're doing this massive like service to others spiritual journey you know and just like me like I, I express my own personal concerns and feelings to you guys, but then I'll go on to tell you a higher vibrational message, but I still struggle with my own stuff. And I want you guys to know that I'm just human. Like everyone else, like, you know, we're all in this boat together (laughs) and we have good days and bad days and indifferent days and crazy days and days where we're just like flat out asleep because the ascension energies are so strong. You know, we're getting the light codes constantly lately, (laughs) you know? And so, But some that sometimes the light codes bring to us emotions that we have not resolved from past incidences that we have not forgotten, at least on a cellular and subconscious level. And so I'm going to tell you this uh, emotion, emotional scale, emotional guidance scale. And according to Abraham, this is how this works. Okay. When you're feeling an emotion that you're not particularly comfortable with, you look at the scale and you read all the words and you see which one is most you right now. And then you reach for the, just the next rung up the ladder. Like if you're in a state of hatred and absolute rage and you reach for joy and appreciation, that's not going to match you vibrationally. That won't match you. Okay. So that makes completely zero sense. But if you're in a hatred, rage, energy, you just hate, 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 you know, and then the next vibration above that is revenge because it's more active. And what's more active is more vibrationally high. And then after you go to anger, you know, to, to revenge, you go to anger because now hatred and rage is a lot lower vibe than anger, right? So, and then after anger, then you reach for the next rung and you next one and you go up the scale and there's 22, there's 22 here. I do acknowledge that that's the same number as the major arcana in the tarot. 22 is a sacred number and it's a master number. Just going to point that out. So anyway, so there's 22 emotions and we're going to start at the bottom of the scale. We're going to talk about these a little bit. All right. So the very lowest emotion with the lowest vibratory rate, the lowest frequency is fear, grief, 
depression, despair, and powerlessness. So if you have, you have like complete despair, like hopeless, powerless, depression, grief, and fear. And we've all experienced this right from time to time and some of us all the time. And if someone is in the process of dying right now or just died or someone just broke your heart or you just lost your house, your town or your job, you might be feeling depression and and grief and fear for your future and despair. The people that were in paradise, California after the town burned down, I'm certain they were all in a state of complete shock and utter despair. They were at that lower, lower, lower level, right? It's hard to be happy when you're in a state like that. It's very low vibration. It's the worst you can feel. That's why a lot of people, when they feel these emotions, they take to their bed. They'll sleep. Sometimes they get very sick and ill, and sometimes they all end up in the hospital. When people have a a really bad shock that leads to an intense grief and depression, that's when you have things like heart attacks. And um, and if your grief is long, long, long time grief, that can lead to things like cancer because it's a lower vibration. Right? We just talked about that from the the whale website so now if you're in the state you need to reach up on the ladder to the next highest rung just try you know if you're feeling and this is going to sound weird but if you're feeling like fear for the future try to feel insecure about the future it's a little bit higher vibration Not a lot. It's not an enormous leap. You know, you're not going from fear to contentment, right? You're going from fear to insecurity. All right. So instead of having abject fear about the future, maybe you could just feel a little bit insecure about the future. Maybe a lot insecure. And then maybe a little bit less insecure. If you're feeling um, depression or grief and you feel like, why did they die And not me. And maybe the next step would be to feel guilt. The energy of guilt is a little bit more than grief or depression. Now, if you're feeling despair or powerless, if you're feeling powerlessness, the next one up from there is unworthiness. If you feel like I have no power, well, then the next thing would be like, well, I just am unworthy right? It's a horrible feeling too, but it's not as horrible as powerlessness. So that's how this works. So the, the, the worst things you could feel, feel are fear, grief, depression, despair, and powerlessness. But the next one up on the rung, uh, you know, the rung on the ladder of the emotional guidance scale is insecurity guilt and unworthiness and that's number 21 so insecurity guilt and unworthiness I mean number 22 again is fear grief depression despair powerlessness now 21 on the rung is insecurity guilt and unworthiness so if you're feeling like the worst one try to just feel guilt for a while (laughs) Try to feel unworthiness or insecurity for a while because it's just a little better when you feel comfortable with that and you're not slipping down into the lower vibration. Reach up for the next one. Okay, so you're insecure about your future. Okay, good. You're not fearing your future. You're just insecure about it. That's fine. Well, what's the next thing? Jealousy is a little bit higher vibration. So number 20 is jealousy. If you could feel jealous of the people that do have a good future coming, that's a better vibration. That's higher. It's still lower, but you know, on the whole scale, but you just need to care about the very next one up. That's all. 
once you feel jealous, maybe you could start, you know, you feel jealous of those people that have the, have it better than you, have a better life than you. Maybe you could start to hate them. Maybe you could get raging angry about it. Just super raging. Like, how dare other people have that? And I don't have that. But you know why that's a higher vibration energy? Because when you're jealous, it's passive. It's just passive. When you are hating, it's active. When you're raging, you're throwing things. And when you're throwing things, you're moving your body. And when you're moving your body, you're pulling in a little bit more life. Pulling in a little bit more life, you're raising your vibration just a little bit more. Is it a good place to stay? Let's hit, let's try to go for hatred and rage today and just stay there today. It's not a good place to stay. It's not a good place to stay. It's a better place than everywhere else, right? But then the next one is revenge. So hatred and rage is at 19. Revenge is 18 on the list. And with revenge, now you could plot against those people. Oh, I tell you what, I'm going to make the best investments. I'm going to live strategically in the best neighborhood. And I'm going to bide my time until that house that is just half a million dollars more than their house. Oh, that will be my revenge. I will buy a house that's worth more than theirs. But I'm going to wait until those people go bankrupt. Yeah, I'll plot my revenge. Right? I don't know if that if that is your issue or not based on this, but I'm I'm making up a scenario. Okay, it's not my personal scenario, but <laughs> but if you're you know if you're 19 hatred and rage, the next best step is 18 revenge. I'm gonna get back at them, right? But then what what's the next one up from revenge? Because that doesn't feel too good either. So 17 is anger. Rage is when you are seething raging anger is when you're seething and to the point where you're seeing red and you can't even see in front of your face. I have been there once. I was there when my, my little puppy ran out and I thought he was going to get hit by a car and he was running down the sidewalk and he ran away from me and I was so angry because I was so afraid. So I was like in 22, but then when I caught up to him, I had lowered, I had raised my vibration up to hatred and rage. I wasn't hating him, but I was raging angry. And then I, I, um, the way you punish a dog, you don't hit them, but you turn them over on their backs and you put your paw on their throat, not hard, but enough to hold them down. So they realize you are the alpha male, right? In my case, the alpha female, but I was the alpha. So, so I did, that was my revenge. And then I was just angry. And then after that, I went to the next one where I was, I was discouraged that he left like, man, don't you like me? And then, you know, so I just went to the next one up. And that what I saw when I was there, I saw red, like before my eyes, I swear my eyes looked red. Probably the energy of red was in my eyes. You know, I felt like there was no way my eyes weren't red in that moment. And I don't mean red, like I've been smoking a lot of weed. I mean, like red lights, <laughs> like a stoplight. That's how I felt. I felt like that kind of energy was emanating from me. Cause I was so, I mean, I wasn't hate, hating him. Obviously I loved him so much, but in that moment I was raging angry. Found out later he, he, he wasn't a dog at all. He was a wolf. He was very smart, but wolves liked to run. He was a runner. He would go take off and run for five, six, seven hours and then come home to home base. But I didn't know that. I didn't know he was a wolf until after he died. I figured it out after I'm like, Oh my God, it makes so much more sense. He was a wild animal that animal control had picked up in the desert. And when they said they found a puppy in the desert, I'm like, oh, it's so sad. Morons, they should have left the wolf in the desert where it belonged. But anyway, I ended up taking care of the last, um, I think it was Socorro, no, Sonoran wolf, desert wolf. He was one of the last. Now they're extinct. And I took care of one of the last ones, thinking the whole time he was just like a really strange dog and no veterinarian could place what dog he was. It was very weird. Anyway, so anyway, after anger, which is at 17 on this list, 
then you can move towards feeling discouraged. All right, I'm no longer angry. I'm just very discouraged. I just don't feel encouraged anymore. I am discouraged, right? And then after you're discouraged, what's after that? That's 16, but 15 is where you want to head next on this map of emotions. 15 is blame. So, you know, I was discouraged. My wolf ran away. And then the next thing is to blame my husband for not latching the front door, blaming my dog for running away, right? My wolf, right? So then blaming, how dare you? It's your fault. Blaming, placing the blame on someone else is literally a higher vibration than just being angry or discouraged. Now, the next one above that is worry. I worry about when this is going to happen again. Or if it will happen again, what will happen next time? Worry is actually a higher vibration than blame. Because again, it's a little bit more active. Active brings in your, you know, your energy more. Blame is just like, well, it's all on you. But worry is like you take it more into you. Then after you're worried, the next highest vibration is doubt. Number 13 is doubt. You start doubting. Doubting is literally higher vibration than worry. After that, then it's just disappointment. I'm just sorry this happened. Number 12 on the list is disappointment. I am so disappointed that this event occurred. I'm just disappointed. And the next vibration above that is a word that uh, um, Abraham made up. But it's such a perfect word. So above 12, disappointment, you have 11, overwhelmment. (laughs) It's the feeling that you're just so freaking overwhelmed that you can't think of anything else. Just (sighs) what happened, but you can't even feel an emotion anymore. You're just like, uh, and you feel kind of numb to the situation. That overwhelming feeling is called overwhelmment, according to Abraham. And they made up the word. It's not was in the dictionary before they came along and said this word, but it's such a perfect word, isn't it? When you just feel so overwhelmed, you can't make a move. You're just stuck. You're overwhelmed because you're in overwhelmment mode. So after you feel overwhelmed, the next one up is frustration, irritation, and impatience. Yeah, I'm just frustrated this happens freaking frustrating right it's like but it's, it's not really angry it's just frustrated I'm not really angry but I'm frustrated have you ever been that where people are like god why are you angry I'm not angry I'm frustrated you know I'm irritated I'm just irritated I haven't gotten anger yet I'm irritated right well that's good don't let it get to anger because irritated is okay being impatient you're in line waiting at the bank and then they all go to lunch and you have to wait another 30 minutes for them, that irritates you. You're not angry because people got to eat. You're, you're frustrated, though. You're frustrated, you're irritated, and you're impatient. You want the line to move along. Well, the next highest energy vibration after that is number nine on the list, which is pessimism. Number 10 is frustration and irritation and impatience. They're all vibrating the same. The next highest vibration is pessimism. Oh, I doubt they'll get back from lunch anytime soon. I doubt it's going to be only in 30 minutes. I think it'll be more like, you know, an hour. That's pessimism, right? Then after you just, you know, kind of burn yourself out on that emotion, you know, number nine is pessimism. And the next highest one up on the list is eight, boredom. So when you're bored... I'm just bored, like waiting in this line, just bored. Whenever they get back, they get back. I'm just bored now. I'm just totally bored of the situation. So that would be the next highest vibration. You see, you see how this is working out? It's just a little bit less negative, a little bit more positive, a little bit more high vibration. You just have to reach a little bit more, just a little bit more, a little bit higher. After you're bored, just bored, 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 bored. I'm bored. That's what remember Garfield used to say bored. 
He was always bored. Then he'd sometimes slip down into pessimism. And sometimes he'd slip up into the next one. Eight is boredom. And seven, the next highest one, now we're getting to the positive vibes, finally. Contentment. He would be bored. He would eat a lasagna, remember? And then we, and then he would be contented. And he'd be like, oh, it was such a good lasagna. I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm so content right now. And he would lay in his bed. <laughs> and he wouldn't fit in because he was, you know, he was a fat cat, remember? Garfield. My little brother and I used to watch that in the 80s. <laughs> so boredom. And then after that, number seven is contentment. I was bored, but you know what? I'm okay now. I'm, I'm, I'm content. Can't say I'm happy yet, but I'm content. Just feeling contentment. After contentment, you reach up a little bit more. Six. Oh, they might be coming back. Looks like they're coming back. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm going to be helped now, right? <laughs> so going along the bank and, you know, staying in line at the bank type of situation. So after contentment, which is number seven, you have six. Hopefulness. Hopefulness. Now you have hope something's going to happen. I am filled with hope. I have hopefulness. After hopefulness, we have optimism. Oh, it looks like I'm next. Wow. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to be next soon. I have, I'm optimistic. Number five is optimism. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be helped soon. Oh, look, three people came back from lunch. I have, opt- I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm going to get out of here 20 minutes or less. All right. Maybe even 15 minutes. Very optimistic. At this point, I'm optimistic. Right? You see how that works? And then after optimism, which is number five, you go to number four. Higher vibration is positive expectation and belief. Oh, I believe I'm next. I have a positive expectation. They're going to call me next. Right? I'm expectant. I'm, I'm expecting that they're going to be, you know, the positive, you know, the positive outcome I'm looking for. I'm expecting that. So positive expectation and belief are the energy vibrations of number four. Then you go to the next highest one up, which is number three, enthusiasm and eagerness and happiness. Wow. Well, you know what? They saw me and I'm enthusiastic. I get to leave the bank. I'm eager to get the hell out of here. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm happy because I'm done with my chores and running around. Have you ever felt that feeling? When you're finished with everything, you got your 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 shopping done and your bank done and your every running around, your errands done, and now you got a day and a half left to your weekend or whatever, right? Or your day off, you got the rest of the day off. You're enthusiastic, oh, wow, and you're eager to get home and slip on your slippers or hop in your pool or whatever it is you do, and you're happy, right? And then what's, but that's not the highest vibration. Happiness isn't. That's number three. But then after you're happy and you get home and you're you're sitting around happy for a while, now what? You reach for the next greatest, highest emotion, which is number two on the list, which is passion. Okay, I'm happy. Now what can I do? Oh, my passion is painting or playing music. Oh, I'm going to go or listen to music and dancing. And I'm going to do my passion. And when you paint and your paint, your passion is painting and you're making a painting and it comes out really well and you're like so fulfilled. The next highest vibration after passion, the number one on the list is joy, appreciation, and you feel empowered and you feel free because you have freedom and you feel love. So if it's about your painting, you have a passion for painting and then you paint and you step back and you appreciate what you've painted and you feel a wonderful sense of joy and you did it and you feel like you can do it. You can make paintings again and again and you feel empowered and it gives you a sense of freedom because you know you can sell them for money (laughs) in this scenario anyway. So that's how this works, right? If you are um, 
eager to see your loved one and you're in a romantic relationship and, and they come home and you're happy. And then you kiss them and this overwhelming, beautiful love energy starts to crop up and you feel passion, passion. You got to kiss them even more. And then when you kiss them anymore, you feel so much joy. You appreciate their presence in your world and in your life. And you feel empowered that they picked you and you feel freedom because there's nothing better than being in love. And now you're in love and the highest vibration greatest thing in this world is love and that's how you do it ladies and gentlemen that's how you do it (laughs) it's pretty pretty cool right now there's another scale I'm going to go over briefly called the map of consciousness that was developed by Dr. David Hawkins I learned about muscle testing from Dr. David Hawkins, not directly, but through his programs. God rest his soul. He had died before I heard of him. It's too damn bad. I would have gone to every seminar he had. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, the map, the map of consciousness is based on a logarithmic scale that he created that spans from zero to 1000. So basically anything under uh, about, you know, 150 to 200, mostly anything that's under 200 isn't very good. So like when I ask, when I use the map of consciousness all the time to ask someone if they're, you know, on the scale of integris, like where are they? Like, hey, and, and if in the scale of integris, according to Dr. David Hawkins, is when someone is in their own power if they're in their own integrity, if a person is a bank robber and they're in the middle of robbing a bank, they're at the height of their own personal power. They're in their own integrity. That's what they are. That's what they do. Even though to the rest of us, that's a very negative thing, especially when they're robbing our money out of the bank (laughs) or for the bank tellers. That's also very negative, right? So if you are a teacher and you're not teaching, you're not empowered and you're not in your own integrity. So this has been called the map of consciousness, but also the scale of integris. And you could ask your higher self, you know, based on this, based on Dr. David Hawkins things, where am I on the scale of integris? Am I above uh, 800? No. Am I above 400? Yes. Am I above 700? Yes. You know, just like that. Is um, my ex-boyfriend above 200? Yes. Oh, thank God. He does have some integrity. On scale of integris, anything below 200 does not have integrity. Right? Anything above 200 is starting to get better. Anything above 300 is getting to a point where, all right, this is good. So I'm going to read to you this. So now this one is... The energetic frequency according to his logarithmic scale. This is not on a Hertz frequency. This is just his own numbers. It's just numbers. It's not an actual frequency. That's why when you see this, when you come across this on Google, if you look it up, it'll say energetic frequency. And the word frequency has um, quotes around it. Like, you know, so now at the very bottom, we have shame, which is 20 energetically. And the the name of the level is the shame level. The associated emotional state is humiliation. And the view of life of someone in this state is miserable outlook on life. The next highest one up is guilt, which is at 30 energetically. And the emotional state that's associated with guilt is blame. And the view of life is evil. All of life is evil. Might as well be evil too, right? And now the next one up is apathy, and that that is 50 on his scale. And the associated emotional state is despair, and the view of life is just hopeless. Everything is hopeless, so they are apathetic. The next one up is, now that was the, the bottom three, and the next three are grief. It vibrates on his energetic scale at 75, and the associated emotional state with grief is regret. 
I regret I didn't get to say one last goodbye. I didn't hug them. I regret it wasn't me, you know? And so the view of life when you are grieving is tragic. Isn't life so short? We don't get everything done. What have I done with my life? My God, you know? So that those kind of energies. And that's 75 on this map of consciousness. The next one above that is fear, which the energetic frequency of fear is 100. The associated emotional state is anxiety. When you're fearful, you feel anxious and your view of life is frightening. Everything is frightening. Very, very frightening. You, Galileo. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do that. The next one up is desire, right? And that's 100, that vibrates at 125 energetic frequency on his logarithmic scale. It's not, I'm sorry, it's not a hertz frequency. It's just a frequency in his logarithm, right? So then when, so when you're feeling the level of desire, you're having a craving. And when you don't get what you're looking for, your view of life is disappointing. That's where addictions come in, right? And when you're addicted, you're disappointed in life that you don't get more. You're craving it. You want more and you don't get it. And and you become a disappointment to others as well. That energy is 125 on this scale. The next one up is anger. And when you're the level of the anger is at 150 and the associated emotional state of anger is hate and your view of life is antagonistic. All you want to do is just be antagonized people all the time and just kind of poke the bear, right? And the next one up from there is pride, where you just like, well, I think that I'm, you know, <laughs> pride cometh before a fall, they say. And that vibrates on this logarithmic scale at 175. And the associated emotional state is scorn, you know, like, oh, scoffing, being scornful, like, ah, oh, look at you. You're this, you're that. Well, I demand because your view of life when you're prideful is demanding of others, right? So the next one up from that is courage and that's at 200. And now that's the tipping point. Actually, the tipping point is courage and that's at 200. So anything below 200 is having pretty much a lack of integrity with who you are on a soul level at the soul level, right? So when you are at courage, that's not a hundred percent negative, right? And that is at 200 on the energetic frequency on the map of consciousness and the associated emotional state with this is affirmation. You know, you're, you're, cur- you're starting to have courage. You're courageous. You're starting to do your affirmations. You're starting to affirm that you're meant to be here in life. Life is affirming you belong. And your view of life becomes feasible. Okay, everything is feasible. This is good. Now, above that, we have neutrality. We're just at the 250 out of 1,000 possible on this map of consciousness and your associated emotional state is, okay, you know what? I'm just going to trust. I don't know either way. I'm neutral. I'm just going to trust. But your view of life is satisfactory because you have trust. That's when all the scales tip in your favor. The next one up from neutrality is willingness. Okay, and willingness is 310 on the energetic frequency. And the associated emotional state is optimism. You're optimistic. Hey, things are looking up. And your view of life is hopeful. I'm, I'm coming into hope. Huh. I hope things work out. I, actually, I'm, I'm optimistic. Things are going to work out. I'm hoping. I'm willing to try. Willingness. So above willingness, you have acceptance, which is at 350 on this scale. And the associated emotional state to acceptance is forgiveness. Look, I accept things happened. I forgive those people that hurt me. All right. And your view of life is harmonious. Look, I forget, I've forgiven, forgotten. It's over. I've let it go. I'm feeling harmony in myself at 350. The next one above that is reason. 
reason. And the energetic frequency of reason is 400. The associated emotional state with reason is understanding. And the view of life is that life is meaningful. When you have the level of reason and you're at 400 frequency, your understanding and your view of life is meaningful. Ah, there's a reason I'm here. Everything has a meaning. You see how that's so much higher in vibration than the next highest one above that is love in the energetic frequency on the map of consciousness by Dr. Hawkins. Love is at 500 and the associated emotional state with love is reverence, reverence. And the view of life is benign. Everything is going in my favor because that's the love universe I live in. Everything is benign. Everything is fine. It's all good. Now, the next state above love is joy. Joy. And the energetic frequency of joy is 540. And the associated emotional state with joy is serenity. Like tranquility, serenity, right? And your view of life is complete. I could see the whole picture. Everything in life is complete, right? And the next one above that is peace, which is the energetic frequency of 600. Peace is even higher than joy. And peace, the associated emotional state with peace is bliss. And your view of life is everything is perfect. It's perfect. Everything is perfect. The next one above that is complete enlightenment and that vibrates at 700 to 1000 on the map of consciousness logarithmic scale okay enlightenment is the highest vibration you can get your energetic frequency is 700 to 1000 and your associated emotional state is ineffable ineffable And the view of life just is. Everything is what it is. And you're totally okay with that. Ineffable, infallible. You can't, nothing can happen. Because you, you make your life the way it is. You're enlightened, right? So I wanted to share with you guys these vibrational frequencies. Uh, now, Doctor Sir D- Doctor David Hawkins Hawkins was an MD and a PhD. He was internationally renowned as a psychiatrist, and he was a consciousness researcher. So, if you go to get his book "Power Versus Force," you will see the emotional vibrational frequency codes in the map of consciousness. And you use a muscle testing technique, applied kinesiology to see where you're at. And you can see where you're vibrating. And then you can kind of see what level you're at. So on this website I found called soulmanity101.com. It's like humanity but without the H-U. They put soul in front, soulmanity101. They have 10 tips on how to increase your vibrational frequency. See how many of them match compared to what I've told you guys over the past several months. Become conscious of your thoughts. Listen to uplifting music and unplug yourself from news and negative TV. Become aware of the vibrational levels of family, friends, and people around you. If you're being pulled into their drama, set your boundaries. See, this kind of sounds like me, right? The stuff I've told you guys recently, like in the past week. 48 hours. (laughs) Practice compassion and forgiveness. That will raise your vibration. Be truly grateful. Be creative. Paint, write, or express yourself. But have fun doing it. Meditate as often as you'd like. Spend time in nature and look intently at what Mother Earth has provided to you. Enjoy your sunrises and your sunsets. 
be more compassionate and empathetic towards situations or people. Become a role model and inspire many around you. And this is on Soul Manity 101, and you can find the scale of Dr. David Hawkins here as well. But you can just do a, a quick search for it and find it. So there you go. It says here, uh, a brilliant genius once said, everything in life is vibration. Guess who said that? <laughs> it was Albert Einstein. Everything in life is at co- in constant motion. Nothing is at rest. Everything in the universe moves, vibrates, oscillates, has a frequency. <laughs> this is the universal law of vibration. And what we spoke about today was the vibration of emotions. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. And if you wish to write me to ask questions, to get clarification on anything, anything at all, questions, comments, praise, I always welcome that. Thank you so much for that. I've gotten that a lot and I'm grateful for that. But if you have ideas for upcoming shows, write me metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com also if you uh, wish to send me a voice message that I might want to play on the air anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical that's how you get to do that um, well other than that you oh you can also write me now on my metaphysical soul speak the discussion group on facebook.com as well as you can contact me at metaphysical at Mermaid Girl 888 on Instagram and Twitter. Well, that's all I got to say about that, guys. I love each and every one of you. I thank you for being my listeners, my subscribers, my favoriters, whatever it says where you are. Click the link. Make sure you never miss another episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the, po- the podcast. All right, that's all I got to say about that. I will be back tomorrow night with all new and original and unique programming, just like always. I'll see you then. Signing off with peace and joy (laughs) and the highest vibrations of our emotions and the fifth dimension. Talk to you guys later. Peace. Hi, guys. I know that it's summertime. It's August. I was born in August, and I know this is a hot, hot month, especially if you're in the United States and now we've sent the hotness over to Europe. (laughs) So if you are enjoying the summer heat, but you're not enjoying what it's doing to your skin, I may have a solution for you. CTFO known for its high quality CBD oil hemp products. CTFO stands for change the future outcome course this is changing the future outcome of your skin your life and well maybe your pocketbook if you decide to join the business for absolutely free and the link is provided for the products and the business right in this show's description I just wanted to let you know real quick that CTFO has a brand new full spectrum CBD oil hemp oil infused SPF 30 sunscreen so this looks amazing this is really going to help you out with those fine lines dark spots and skin aging that normally would occur if you did not use any protection at all Uh, as you know CBD oil does help against free radicals it helps get rid of wrinkles it reverses skin conditions such as ruddiness breakouts and also inflammation in the skin so this is a gentle sheer formula 
enriched with antioxidants and it protects all skin types as well as being water resistant. We also have a new after sun skincare cream filled with vitamin D. And as you know, your skin would love to absorb the vitamin D, not just from the sun, but also from the cream after you're out of the sun. Remember we talked about a couple weeks ago how vitamin D can help you absorb things like magnesium, potassium, vitamin C, and it goes down to the bone and it makes you so healthy. Vitamin D is excellent. And here it's this, this cream, this after sun skincare cream has loads of vitamin D. So if you want to check it out, yeah, if you don't want it, that's cool. If you want to check it out, there is a link in the show's description. Just wanted to let you guys know.